for today's lesson, we are going to move on to chapter 5.4, which is on factorization of quadratic expression involving cross method. Okay, again, make sure you have your notebook as well as your textbook with you so that you can copy down relevant notes. I'm going to touch on concept very briefly first before I move on to example, where I will show you how the cross method works. Okay, let's do a very brief recap on what are the four ways to factorize an expression. The four ways are pulling out common factor, which you have already learned in the previous lesson. The next, which is on cross method, that is the method you are going to learn today. For part C, differences of two square, you are going to learn it in the upcoming lesson, grouping, which is going to be in set three. Now, cross method is very useful in factorizing a quadratic expression. What exactly is a quadratic expression? Example of quadratic expression has been written down here for you. It's in the form of 3x squared plus x minus 5. You do realize that in this quadratic expression, there's altogether three different terms, and the highest power for this expression is a 2. Okay, and the format is always in the format of something x squared plus x followed by a number term. So cross method is used to factorize such an expression. So let's move on to the first example. Now, in this first example, you're supposed to factorize x squared plus 5x plus 6 completely. Now, if you look carefully, there's altogether three terms. The first is your x squared term. The second is a 5x term. The last is a number term called 6. Okay, now we need a frame in order to use cross method to factorize. Now, how am I supposed to use this frame? I'm going to show you the cross method now. Firstly, I need to put in these three different terms into the frame given. So x squared will go to the first column. 5x will go to the last column. And lastly, the 6 will go to the second column. Now, when you use the cross method, firstly, you need to look vertically downwards. So meaning to say, x squared term, what multiplied by what will give you x squared? There's only one combination, that is x multiplied by x. Okay, next, I need to look at the number 6. Ask yourself, what multiplied by what will give you a 6? Meaning, I need to go and look for the product for the number 6. So for 6, I have two different ways of multiplying. The first one is 1 multiplied by 6. The second product is 2 multiplied by 3. Both will actually give you the number 6. Then, what should I be using then? So let's try. If I were to use 1 multiplied by 6, how cross method work is this? As the name suggests, cross method means I need to cross and I need to multiply it. So when I cross x with 1, it means I multiply x by 1, I will end up with an x term. Next, when I cross my 6 with x, it means I'm taking 6 to multiply by x. So if I have 6 multiplied by x, what I end up with is a 6x. Now, what I do for the last column is I must do adding up. So x plus 6x, do you get a 5x? You realize that you do not get a 5x at all. So which means this is not a good factor to find your x squared plus 5x plus 6 for the factorization. So let's try. Now I'm going to again put your first column as x squared, second column as 6, last column as 5x. So when you read downwards vertically, what multiplied by what will give you x squared? There's only one combination, x multiplied by x. So since I've already tried uh, 1 multiplied by 6 earlier in the first example here, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try with 2 by 3. So let's do this now. 2 multiplied by 3. Again, when I say cross method, meaning I'm going to cross up, x with 2, I will end up with 2 multiplied by x to give you a 2x. Next, I'm going to multiply 3 with x. So 3 multiplied by x will give you a 3x. 
Lastly, to check whether this combination is a good combination, I add up the last column. So 2x plus 3x, what do you end up with? You end up with a 5x, meaning to say this is the exact product that I want. So you do realize that 5x is for you to check to see whether the combination for x squared as well as the combination for 6, is it correct or wrong? So how do I read off the factor then? The factors, when I read, I read it horizontally in this manner. Okay, so which means the first factor I have for x squared plus 5x plus 6 is simply x plus 2. Why plus? Because there is no sign in front of 2. So it means it's a positive 2. Next, the next factor involved is x plus 3. So this is the factors for x squared plus 5x plus 6. Again, how do I know whether my factors are correct? Let's do a very quick check. As I've mentioned in the previous lesson, if I want to check to see whether the factors are correct or wrong, what I do is I expand out. So the factors that I've gotten out from the cross method is x plus 2 and x minus 3. What I do is I'm going to start to expand. So to see whether do I get back to the original expression as stated in the question. So let's expand now using the rainbow method. I will end up with x multiplied by x will give you an x squared. Continue to do so. x multiplied by 3 will give you a plus 3x. Continue to do so. 2 multiplied by x will give you a plus 2x. Lastly, 2 multiplied by 3 will give you a plus 6. So again, can you see that your 3x and 2x are similar terms? I'm going to put them together and you end up with x squared plus 5x plus 6. Can you see that your x squared plus 5x plus 6 is exactly the same as the one that is stated in the question? So it means that the factorization is correct. So Expanding, which means the opposite of factorization, is always the way to check to see whether your expand or your factorization is correct or wrong. Okay, let's move on to the second example. Now, in this second example, again, you see you are supposed to factorize x squared plus x minus 6 completely. So what am I supposed to do? Okay, firstly, using this frame, I'm going to input Using this frame, I'm going to input x squared, x, and minus 6 into the frame given. So x squared, the second column, put in a minus 6, and not just a 6. The sign in front is very important. You should include in as well. The last column, put in an x. Now, for the first column, as I Fill it up vertically downward, it means what multiplied by what will give me an x squared. There's only one combination, x multiplied by x. So next, for minus 6, there's a few combinations. What is the combination that I'm looking at? It could be minus 1 multiplied by 6. 6 minus 6 multiplied by 1. Or it could be 2 multiplied by minus 3. Or lastly, your minus 2 multiplied by 3. Okay, so as you can see, negative multiplied by positive will give you a minus. Minus multiplied by positive will give you a minus. And you see 1 times 6, 6 times 1, 2 and 3, 2 and 3 will all give you a 6. So now is to choose the correct combination to put into the frame. So if you were to look carefully, the only combination that allows me to get an x at the end is only 3 as well as minus 2. So if you see this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross. So 3 multiplied by x, you will end up with a 3x. Minus 2 multiplied by x, you will end up with a minus 2x. So if you were to add up the last column, you'll realize it will give you an x. So 
how do I read the factors? Factors, when I read it, it will be horizontally across, horizontally across. So what is the factor involved in this? The factors involved will be equals to x plus 3, because next to a 3, there's no sign. It means it's a positive 3. Next, x minus 2. Again, if you want to check, you can always do expansion using rainbow method to see whether you can get back your x squared plus x minus 6 or not. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Okay, again, I'm supposed to factorize x squared minus x minus 6. So let's firstly put in all the terms into the frame provided. Okay, so first column, I will have my x squared. Second column, I will have my minus 6. The last column, I will have my minus x. Take note, the sign next to x as well as 6 is important. We should include it into the frame as well. Okay, firstly, by looking downwards, what is the product of x squared? There's only one combination, x multiplied by x. For minus 6, as what I've stated earlier, minus 6, there's a few, minus 1 times 6. 6 minus 6 multiplied by 1. I also have minus 2 times 3 or I have minus 3 times 2. So what is the combination that will give me a minus x in the end? The only combination that I can choose that will give me a minus x at the end is minus 3 by 2. So I'm going to write down and show you minus 3 multiplied by 2. So when you cross it up, it means you multiply, you end up with minus 3x. When you cross, you end up with 2x. So when you add these two terms up, you end up with a minus x. So this combination is what we want. How do we read the factors? Horizontally across, you will read it as x minus 3 as the first factor. Second factor will be x plus 2. So let's write it down again. Okay, and so this is how we factorize question 3. I hope you are following so far. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay, question 4. Again, these three terms. This time round, I'm supposed to factorize x squared minus 5x plus 6 completely. Okay, so let's take a look. <clears throat> Firstly, make sure we get all the terms into the frame. Okay, so the first column will be my x squared term. Second column will be my positive 6. The last column, minus 5x. So the first column, as I read vertically downwards, the only combination that I can have is x multiplied by x. Okay, now let's look at your 6. 6, what are the factors involved for 6? So it can be 1 multiplied by 6 or 2 multiplied by 3. However, if you look carefully at the last term, the last term is actually a minus 5x. So which means I need the second column, which means the number 6, to have something that involves negative number. So if you do remember carefully in your set 1, do you recall that I can actually write my 6 as minus 2 multiplied by minus 3? See, can you see negative? Multiply by minus, you end up with positive. 2 times 3, you end up with 6. So another possible combination for 6 would be minus 2 multiplied by minus 3. So let's try with this last combination since it contains negative uh, numbers for both. So let's put it in minus 2 and minus 3. So what happens is when I cross x Multiply by minus 2, you end up with minus 2x. x multiply by minus 3, you end up with minus 3x. When I add these two items up, what happens? You will end up with a minus 5x. And so your combination is correct. So how do I read the factors? Factors, I read it horizontally across, horizontally across. So what do I have? I have this as my factors. So equals to x minus 2, next x, minus 3. So this is the factors involved 
for x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now, let's move on to the next question. At any point in time, if you need to pause the video, please go ahead to do so, so that you can copy down the relevant notes. Okay, let's move on to question 5. Now, all along, what we have doing uh, for quadratic expression, you do realize is that all the x squared term are all 1. Okay, let's move up further to show you are all 1. Now, what happens if my expression for the quadratic expression for the x squared, the coefficient is no longer 1? It's a 3 instead. Does the cross method still apply? It does. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to input all these three different terms into the frame provided. Okay, so let's put it in 3x squared minus 6 as well as 7x. Okay, so for the first column, I need to read it vertically downwards. So which means what multiply by what will give you a 3x squared? Actually, there's only one combination, which is x and 3x. Okay, of course, if you want to put 3x on top and x below, that is fine as well. It doesn't matter. The answer will still be the same at the end. Okay, so let's look at minus 6. What is the combination for minus 6? So minus 6, I have a few. Minus 1 times 6. Minus 6 times 1. Minus 2 times 3. As well as minus 3 times 2. So what is the combination that best suit this particular factorization such that I can get a 7x out of this? You realize that the only combination that I can put down is 3 multiplied by minus 2, which is this particular combination. So when I have this, what happens is when I cross up, 3 multiply, 3x multiply by 3, you end up with a 9x. Next, when I cross up x multiply by minus 2, you will end up with a minus 2x. So when you add up the two terms, you will end up with a 7x, which is what you want and which is what is required in a question. So hence, this is the correct combination. So I'm going to read off the factors horizontally. First factor is x plus 3. Second factor is 3x minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to write this down now. So x plus 3 as well as 3x minus 2. So these are the two factors that will give you 3x squared plus 7x minus 6. Okay, one thing to note here, uh, it is also correct for you to write 3x minus 2 first followed by x plus 3. Okay, both this and this are the same. Okay, it's like telling you 3 times 2 and 2 times 3. Both will give you the number 6. So similarly, x plus 3 multiplied by 3x minus 2. 3x minus 2 times x plus 3. Both of it will give you 3x squared plus 7x minus 6. That's the reason why I said it's also okay for you to put down in this format. Uh, for you to put down 3x here followed by x. Of course, the number here, the number in this column will have to change accordingly. It will be minus 2 followed by a 3. You will still end up with the same correct factor. Okay? Alright, if you are done copying with this, let's move on to the next example. Okay, this Example is from the textbook, exercise 5D, page 126, question 26. The question is to factorize 4G squared minus 8G minus 21 completely. Okay, so let's take a look at this particular question now. So again, first thing first, I need to go and input all my different terms into the frame given. So first column, 4G squared. Second column, minus 21, the last column, minus 8G. Okay, now, thing is, for 4G square, you will realize that I have different combination that I need to look at. So 4G square, 
I can write it as 4G multiplied by G. I can also write it as 2G multiplied by 2G. Okay, next, minus 21. Again, I have different combination to, con uh, to consider. First, minus 7 times 3. Next, I can have 7 times minus 3. Or I can have minus 21 times 1. Lastly, I can have minus 1 times 21. Now, I know you may find it tedious to find out exactly which are the factors or combination that will give me a minus 8G at the end. Of course, this is your first time doing this. You may find it tedious, but over time, as you practice on it, things will get easier and faster for you. So, the correct combination, after you list down all these factors, you will realize that it will be 2G and 2G. So 2G times 2G will give you a 4G square. The next combination that I'm going to choose is going to be minus 7 and 3. Let's check to see whether this combination gives me a minus 8G. So I'm going to cross up to multiply. So minus 7 times 2G will end up with a minus 14G. This one, I'm going to cross up 2G times 3 will end up with a 6G. So when you add these two terms up, you will end up with a minus 8G. So the combination here is correct. And the combination that I've chosen is 2G multiplied by 2G. The next is minus 7 multiplied by 3. Now the rest of the combination, it means it doesn't work at all. Okay, if you don't believe, you can, you can try it yourself and you realize that the rest of the combination does just will not give you a minus 8G at the end. Okay, so how do I actually write down the factors? Factors, this is the first factor, and of course, this is the second factor. So you will have 2G minus 7 as well as 2G plus 3. Okay, so take note for this question, it's slightly tedious because you have to take note of 4G squared. There's a few combinations to consider. You also need to take note of minus 21. There's also a few uh, combinations to consider. Like I said, once you practice more, you will get faster and faster at solving factorizing for quadratic expression. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Okay, next example that we have is minus x squared minus 2x plus 3, in which we need to factorize. So the special thing about this is that the coefficient of x squared, which means the number in front of x squared, is a minus 1. Okay, so again, same things apply. Let's input all the terms into the frame. So minus x squared in the first column, 3 in the second column, minus 2x as the last column. Sorry, minus x squared. I must have forgotten about my minus x squared. Okay, so right now, I need to look vertically downwards. What multiplied by what will give me my minus x squared? There's actually one combination, or rather two. La. So minus x squared, I can either put it as minus x times x, or x multiplied by minus x. So it doesn't really matter whether you want to choose this or this. The number after, which means 3, will be the one that we need to consider in order to solve this problem. So let's say we take minus x multiplied by x. Okay, can? Now for 3, there's only one combination. 3 is equal to 3 multiplied by 1. Or I can use 1 times 3. So how should we put it? If we want to get a minus 2x at the end, the only way that I can put will be in the form of 1 and 3. So if you look carefully, if I were to cross my minus x with a 3, it means I multiply, I will end up with a minus 3x here. This one, when I cross x with a 1, it means to multiply, I will end up with an x. So together, when I add this up, I will end up with a minus 2x, which means to say 
my combination is correct. Okay, so factors involved read horizontally across is just your minus x plus 1. Okay, the other one is your x plus 3. Now, uh, do take note, for minus x plus 1, it's also okay to write it as 1 minus x, x plus 3. Both are correct. Okay, nothing wrong with this. Okay, if you are okay with this question, we are going to move on. I hope you are able to catch how cross method works. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Question 8. So for this, I'm supposed to factorize 4x squared minus 6x minus 4 completely. Now, there's actually two ways to solve this question. For those who are very quick, you will realize that these three terms, there's actually a common factor. What is the common factor? The common factor between 4x squared, 6x, and a 4, common factor is actually a 2. So if I can find a common factor that I can factorize out first, what I need to do is I need to take out these two. So once I factorize out a 2, the leftover is, for the first term, 2x squared, next, minus 3x, next, minus 2. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to do bring out common factor. If you realize that these three terms, there's actually common items between these three terms. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to factorize this part here now. Okay, take note, uh, this is an expression, which means you cannot throw away the 2, which means you cannot divide by 2 throughout. Okay, you can only do factorizing by bringing out the common factor 2, and your 2 must be there. Because at the end, when you expand out, the factor factorized form, you must make sure you get back your 4x squared minus 6x minus 4. Now, how do I uh, use, uh, how, how do I factorize 2x squared minus 3x minus 2? Okay, let's do this now. Let's put it, let's put your 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 into the various columns. So starting with 2x squared as the first column, minus 2 as the second column, minus 3x as the last column. So if you do look carefully, what happened? Okay, the first column, I can write it as 2x multiplied by x. Of course, if you want to write x as the first line here, okay, and then 2x at the bottom, that's fine as well. Okay, all right, so let's look at minus 2. So in order to get my minus 3x at the end, the only combination that I can put in will be 1 and minus 2. 1 multiplied by minus 2 will give you a minus 2. So when I cross, I will end up with a minus 4x. When I cross, I will end up with an x. Okay, together, these two terms will give you a minus 3x at the end. So, how do I read the factors? So when I read, I read it horizontally across. Okay, alright. So the final factorized form is a 2 in front. This part here will be factorized into 2x plus 1 and x minus 2. Okay, so 2x plus 1, x minus 2 is the factorized form of 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. So 4x squared minus 6x minus 4, the full factorized form is this whole item here. Okay, now what's another way of solving? Now another way of solving is this. Some of you might forget to take out common factor first. That's fine. In fact, that's very common among a lot of students. So what then do we do? So as per usual, we will proceed on to use the frame to do cross method first. So using the frame 4x squared minus 4 minus 6x, what I do is I'll again search from the different combination to put in to find this factorized form of 4x squared minus 6x minus 4. And the only combination that I can put in in order to end up with a minus 6x is the first column must be a 2x and a 2x. Okay, second column 
is 1 multiplied by minus 4. So when I do that, and I, when I cross, I will end up with a 2x. Cross, I will end up with a minus 8x. Can you see when I do the addition, I will end up with a minus 6x here? Okay, so uh, the rest of you can go and try with the other combination for 4x squared and minus 4, and you realize that it doesn't give you your minus 6x at the end. So hence, this is the only suitable combination that I can get out of your 4x squared minus 6x minus 4. Okay, so now once I do that already, again, I can read across. Okay, so what do I have? Now, um, the factors involved in this case will be 2x plus 1 as well as 2x minus 4. Okay, do you realize that this second part here, 2 and the 4, there's a common factor? It means that these particular factors are not fully factorized. So hence, what do I need to do? I need to factorize out my 2. So how do I factorize out my 2? 2x plus 1 times 2 times x minus 2. So can you see for the first term, after I pull a 2 out, oh sorry, for 2x minus 4, the common term that is, uh, the common term that is common between 2x and 4 is a 2. So hence, I've already pulled a 2 out. So the leftover is just an x. And the leftover for 4 is just a 2. Okay, but usually the number, we will usually put it right in front. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this. I will end up with a 2, 2x plus 1. Following that is x minus 2. So if you looked up at the example I've done earlier, it's exactly the same. Okay. Alright, so you have fully factorized this particular expression. There's no more example I'm going to go through already. This is already the last example. I hope you do remember how to do cross method or rather how to use the cross me uh, method effectively. The main thing is we are talking about different combinations. So a bit of trial and error is necessary while using cross method. The main thing is the middle term, which is the x term, is for you to check to see whether your combination is correct or wrong. And also do remember, when we cross, it means we multiply. Okay, when we read the factors at the end for the answer, it's always horizontally across. Okay, so make sure you, you remember that. That's all for today's lesson. Thank you very much.